today we are starting the new start to finish on my uh, my new kits, my watercolor uh, florals kits, which are actually down underneath here <laughs> somewhere. So today, um, I'm I'm super stoked. Let's just get that out of the way. I'm really excited about this. Not gonna lie. Uh, today we're going to curate my signatures is kind of what I'm going to talk through. Um, I didn't show this, I don't think, in the last one start to finish, and I had several people ask questions about it. So um, I'm just going to talk you through my process, I guess. <laughs> and uh, we'll like put some journal signatures together. Um, I've got my two new kits. If you haven't seen the flip through. I have a flip through of them a couple videos back. Uh, they're in my shop right now. I'm using both the paper packs and the ephemera packs um, for both the watercolor garden and the vintage watercolor garden. Now I'm not, I have not <laughs> actually decided if I'm going to like work on both of these simultaneously because they require a different set of things. So I'll probably like curate my signatures at the same time here, but then I, after this, I'll probably like start just do one and then go through the other one. Um, but like I'll make, I'll build the covers at the same time and stuff since they're kind of companion journals. Anyway, so what, what I've done to this point, I, I thought, okay, if we're going to do a true start to finish, I'm going to show you what I do. Um, I have my kits. I've got my my paper kit here and my um, ephemera pack printed out and I have literally not cut these out yet. I will do that today and I haven't folded up my paper pack at all. I've just got the fronts printed and then I've backed all of the pages with one of the background pages, either the lighter one or the green one, right? So those are ready to be folded. Then, then what I do is I go have a search through, I, I, I a rummage through my, my stuff. <laughs> and I find, you know, papers or things that I want to include in the journals. And um, as I was doing that, I actually ran across some really great finds <laughs> that I, these were, this was a deep dig. Um, but look at this. Okay, so these are the background. This is the backgrounds of the papers of the paper pack, right? So you get these backgrounds in the paper. Sorry for the shadowiness too, guys. I'm sorry. It's a really super gray day outside. And so I've got my filming lights on, but there's like a really bad shadow right here and I don't know how to fix it right now. So it is what it is. Let me see if I can turn this one up a little brighter at all. Yeah, that maybe help a little. Anyway, um, as I was rummaging through my stuff, I totally forgot that I made these spray papers a long time ago for a baby book that I was working on, and I used Tattered Angels spray stuff and made these splattery pages, and these are the ones that are left over that I'd never used. And I was like, OMG, they will work perfectly with this book. Um, and yeah, so we're definitely using those up as, I mean, they just, they'll, they'll go really well. Look at that. They'll go really well. So we're going to use these bright colors up. And then I found a bunch of off cuts of this paper pack. This is a paper pad, a 12 by 12 that I, um, had quite a while ago. And look at that. I mean, these will go really well too. So I've got the off cuts of those. We can make pockets and things and then some little, you know, whatever for long skinny tags. But then when I first, first got my cutting machine, I actually took a piece of this paper. This was a 12 by 12 and put it through there and it cut me out all these little butterflies. So these are totally perfect for, oops, that one got bent. Um, for this book. And then I also found that I had cut in anticipation of whatever project I was going to do, um, a bunch of my 
uh, labels. So these are my grungy pastel labels. So those will work too. So we've got those. So then I also remembered or found that my lovely friend Dee Dee Fargo, who has her own channel you should check out, had sent me some of these brightly colored envelopes a while back. And so these will totally work. And then also a couple of, oh, that's just a page of avocado stained paper. We'll throw some of that in there. And then this long envelope. Um, and I thought we'll figure out something cool to do with that too. So that's this one. That's this pile. Then for this kit, this is the vintage watercolor garden kit right so that's well that's the background pages those are the background pages for this one so this is a more just it's the same kit um only instead of being on brightly colored papers it's on grungy more vintage um paper background so it turns it into something totally different so I've got the paper pack and the ephemera pack for that that I haven't, of course, cut out yet. So need to do. Then I am also going to use my new floral cabinet cards kit. I will cut these out because I think they go really well with this kit. So we'll use those. And I'm going back to this paper pad because like the a couple of the pages like this one and maybe this and maybe one of these greens. Like, look at that. Doesn't that go with it? Right, so maybe that, not all of it, like these are more botanical things, but maybe one of those, maybe one of these, definitely one of those. So those are, I'm gonna put some of these into the book. Um, oh, that one for sure, I love this paper. Isn't that so gorgeous? Anyway, um, I know people are going to ask, this is at, I got this from Hobby Lobby, um, but I know that people were having a really hard time finding it because I used it in my nature book. So I'm not entirely sure if this still is there or not, or if you can order it on their website or anything. So I'm not, that I'm not sure of. So we're going to use some of those. And then I just went and had a rummage and pulled out some like, up, you know, bags. This is a real grungy coffee stained envelope. I thought we could put a couple of uh, doilies, coffee stained doilies in there. Then I found, oof, come on now, um, some pre-folded pieces of paper from who knows whatever project I was working on. I thought maybe we could put some music in this one. We can put some uh, jigs and reels and hornpipes. Sink, there's, there we go. So we can put some of that, and then I've just got a stack of coffee stained paper that we can put into it as well. Um, I also brought this out, which I found, now this I found at Hobby Lobby very recently, and I'm kind of excited to play with it. It is, these are the designs that are in there, but it's adhesive. So like, you can, oof, it's, it feels thick right now and kind of bendy because it's just like a giant sticker. So you can separate it. Well, you you guys can probably separate it. I am going to have a difficult time because of course I'm like, look at, you can separate it, peel it back, and this is super sticky. And it's like really sticky. So I think it will really stick down. So, and it's in these gorgeous paper patterns that would go really well, well, maybe not cheetah, but <laughs> um, like this would go really well with this journal as well. So I thought, okay, well, we can play with those and see if we can figure out anything cool to do with those. So let's go back to this guy. Oh, I was gonna also show you, hold on. Hold on, please hold, please hold. Okay, this, of course, I'm gonna try and bring this under my camera. <laughs> it's one of these big giant, you know, paper file things. And it is full of 
a bunch of my coffee stained papers and things. So um, when I'm starting a journal, I go through this thing and pull out some stuff. Now I've got all these gorgeous pink papers from Beth. So um, how fitting it is that we put some of them in here because she's the one who gave me the background papers. So I'm gonna pull out some of these pink papers here and we will use some of them in this journal. Let's see, ooh, we get some crunchy paper in there. Yup, because you know how I love the crunchy paper. And then, what's this? Oh, that's just another piece that's already folded. Less work. Um, here's a piece of like composition notebook paper. We'll probably have to cut it down or fold in the edges. And then, these are a couple of pieces of um, pink polka dot dye that I got from my friend Chantal. Yeah, okay, that's probably good. That's probably good. Let me put that back so it's out of the way. So literally what I'm gonna do, guys, and I will fast forward this because Ain't nobody got time to just sit and watch me fold papers cause boring. So what I'm gonna do is fold, I'm gonna move this vintage stuff out of the way. And then I'm gonna fold all of these. I'm gonna fold all of these in half. I'm gonna fold my little stained coffee stain, or you know, like colored stained ones, papers that I found. And then I'm gonna set them in some piles. We join you when I've got that done, okay? <laughs> sheets as kind of like you know little half pieces in there and some of them I folded the edges over because they're 12 inches so folded in half just folded completely in half would be too they'd stick out so um, some of them I've done this and we'll turn those into little tuck spots so I think I'm going to make I made five of these so I think I'm going to make five smaller signatures um, I've been liking smaller signatures lately because it doesn't it I don't know it feels like I can put more in without having these big chunky bulky mega signatures <laughs> I don't know I feel like it's different on every journal so I'm going to pick five papers that I just kind of want to be the outside of my signatures so um I want ones that I can actually do some decorating on without covering up like butterflies and stuff. So I'm just gonna pick some plain floral ones. So that one, that one, one, two, three, two, three, four, and five. There we go. So these are going to be the outside pages of my signatures. When I'm doing a book, um, I usually like to have on the outside of my signature either 
a page from the kit so then that way it kind of coordinates as I put all of them together into the book there's consistency or I like to do a page of cardstock that's a little heavier to kind of have like a foundational page I guess or I don't know what my thinking is behind that but just something a little more sturdy kind of through the book um, especially if I'm putting a lot of elements in so <clears throat> This time I'm going to put these five on the outside, which then leaves me with, let's see, I don't care so much about the other papers, but I wanna make sure that I get these spread, the rest of the kit pages spread fairly evenly. Okay, so there's nine. So that means we can put two in each one, except one will only get one more. Make sense? And I'm going to do the one more one right away so I don't forget that. So I'm going to set my cover ones over here. And then we'll just start loading these up. And this is basically what I do. I open it up. I go, okay, I'll put some of this in. A page of this. Then we'll put one of these guys in. And then let's put my next page of... And sometimes I kind of check against, like, is it too busy if I put that there um, with this in the background? It might be. So um, I'll maybe put that in between these two because that's not so super busy then. Then here's our one page from the kit for this one. And we'll put one of these lighter ones here. And... Yeah, that's probably it for that one. Okay, so how many pages was that? One, two, the half page. Three, four, five, six. So let's aim for between six and eight pages in each signature, huh? All right, here's our next cover. And let's go with our first kit page and one of these multicolor look at how well those work together these look a little darker on camera than they actually are in real life but I think that's for, because of the shadowiness I need to get a new light that comes down here on my desk right now they're all like overhead I think they're too high let's put some butterflies in and let's put a crinkly now some of these are going to be too big for my signature and I'll have to go come back. See that's like over the edge there. I'll have to come back and cut them down. Then let's put our second. What are we on now? How many? Now I'm chatting and I'm losing track guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Let's do seven. Did I put two kit pages in there? One, two, okay, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Next one. We'll go, let's go with a splattery page right away. And these butterflies will look lovely right next to that splattery page. This one I figured out, look guys, somehow I got a piece of paper that says Untitled Document, Google Prints. And it's just got a little bit there and a little bit there, but the rest of it's okay. So I'm not going to toss it out. I'll just cover that with washi or ribbon or, you know, some sort of edge treatment and we'll be good. I don't know how the world that happened. Well, yes, I do. Let's not lie. I know how exactly how that happened because that's how I roll. I turn on my printer and just let it go, right? You guys know this if you've been around for any amount of time. These are, you know, you can put them down at the bottom of your signature. You can move them up to the top. You can have them right in the middle. It's kind of nice. You can do what, you know, put them however you want to. Um, I want to put that next to a blue. Oh, let's do this kind of yellowy one there. How many are we at here? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
let's do this page seven. And I'll have to cut that down. Did I do two pages from the kit? Yes. Okay. And that one. Okay. Next one, two. Oh, come on, fingers. Don't fail me now. Three. Now let's put this pretty bluish one with this blue paper. So pretty. Four. Five. Oh, I forgot to fold the edges of that in, so I'll come back and do that in a second. Six. Seven. Is that two pages of kit? Yes, yeah, seven. And eight. And one more signature. Okay. We'll put this in, which we will have to cut down for sure. Three. Ooh, those purples look pretty together. Excuse me if I'm like way out of camera here. Let's put this little guy in here. Last track again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Our last kit page. Seven and eight. Okay. So now we have five, let's put that at the back. <laughs> We've got five signatures basically curated. I'm going to um, leave these additional pages out here because I often add or subtract kind of as I go. Um, and I'm going to do this really quick. This one needs to be, I forgot to fold the edges in on this little guy. So what I usually do is just, this one I'm gonna do both edges cause I folded it right in half for some dumb reason. So I fold in the edge just a little bit and then I'll probably sew along the top and bottom and that will become a cute little tuck spot and I will do the same over here but I'm gonna make this one a little bigger. And that way it will fit in the signature now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to scoot these up here because I'm going to bring out the big guns here. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to adjust my camera, and if it goes really bad, then I will just meet you in a second. <laughs> oh, that's, that's actually working pretty good there. Okay, yeah. I don't have to meet you in a second. Let's pull out the giant paper trimmer okay so here's my big old paper trimmer and what I'm gonna do is if you don't make your signatures too big you can trim the edges down with this guy if they're super thick that's too many pages for this but what I'm gonna do is make sure I've got everything centered where I want it then I'm gonna make sure I tamp it down really good Right, and kind of get that middle of the signature pressed in as much as I can and and pinch it really good here. Because I don't, you know, if you just let it go, the papers will all kind of spread out. What I want to do is just make a nice edge on here. So I'm going to go under and just line up. I'm lining up with the edge of my top page and giving everything else a little bit of a trim. And then on this one, I've got to do the bottom part too. So I'm gonna make sure, make sure that I'm not cutting off extra pieces of extra pages that I don't want to cut off. And just trim off this bottom. There we go. Now we've got a nice, even signature on all sides, right? So let's do, the other ones. 
This one I know I want. This bottom, oops, this bottom piece got to come off. But it's fine the rest of the way around. This one's got another piece of crinkly paper. So I'm going to side trim this one's good This one, I am going to, um, I'm going to leave these flaps because I'll just fold them in. I'm just going to cut down the top. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here. Okay, let's get rid of that guy for now. And get rid of all of this. And what I mean here is I'm going to make these little fold outs. So that way in the signature, there'll be a fold out there and a fold out here. Oh my gosh, I just, I'm flipping through these pages, loving it. How happy and cheerful and bright this is gonna be. Okay. So I've got our signatures curated for the first book, right? Now let's go to the other one and let's pull out some pages from here that, so here's kind of how I do. I'll put out a few pages from the kit like so, so I can kind of see what I'm working with. And then I put my book my paper pad on top like this and I go okay does that work with it and yeah I kind of like the way that looks so that one gets in too much botanical that one's too dark not really that one is botanicals botanicals this one I like This one I like. And we're going to do five signatures. So these are going to be the outside of my signatures. So I'm just trying to pick five papers. Maybe this one too. And this one. For sure. Okay, did I pick five? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, okay. So we've got five papers. Clearly we need to cut those down because that's a 12 by 12 and that's a little bigger than we're going for. So I am going to um, cut these. I'm going to cut these down and then I will fold. Oh, I've got to cut down. I've got my, um, I've got this, but then I'm going to cut down some of this as well. Let's pull a few sheets of this off. That's hanging on literally by a thread. This is what it looks like when people say I'm hanging on by a thread. That's what this piece of paper is doing. Can you even see it there? It's hanging on by a thread. Okay, so we're going to just pull a few of these out. Oh, these are still attached. Let's do this. Let's Unfortunately, we're going to get rid of the threads because then I can, yeah, so these are actually really well attached. Um, sometimes you'll get books like this. Oops, geez. And then I'm doing that. That's the one thread that's still attached to the other one. So these I can sew right into my signature and I'll just cut them down like that. So let's see if we can find a couple more of those. Let's 
one, two. And this one isn't, so this one can go sideways though, and that's fine. I'm okay with music and stuff going sideways. Three, four, five, okay, we'll do that. Um, yeah, I'm okay with music going sideways. I'm okay with it going up and down. Like, I think that's part of that junk journal aesthetic. Okay, that goes in that pile. All right, so I'm going to um, pull my big cutter back out and uh, cut these down. These I don't, I don't wait until after the signature to cut these down. Um, I cut them down ahead of time just because otherwise they're, you know, this is humongous. So I'm gonna put those up there, pull my cutter out and do this. And I'll be right back. sheets and my kit pages folded but what I realized kind of in doing this is that um, two things first these are awesome bright white backs not so awesome so we have to deal with that and before I fold all of the coffee stain pages that I want to do up I think I want to like see how this is splattery I think I want to splatter some watercolor paints on some of these just a little bit here and there just to kind of carry that theme through since we use those splattery inky pages in the other ones. I kind of want to do that to some of these. So let's do that. Um, on these, we have to get them, we have to get them way darker faster, right? They need to be not, this is a vintagey feeling thing and we can't be doing bright white now, come on now. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna pull out a few things. I'm gonna grab some watercolors, a water pen um, or a water brush. And yeah, I'm gonna grab a few things and I'll be right back. Okay guys, now we've got some things. So the first thing I wanna do, I've got some glimmer mist, some distress spray, I've got water, some, water things. I've got some watercolor paints. First, I just want to take down the white on these just a little bit. So my trick for this, and it's not my own trick, I've seen other people do it. I'm, I don't know where I picked it up from, but this is just an old makeup brush and this is vintage photo. And I am just swirling it on and uh, it just takes that the some of the edge off the white. So I'm going to swirl this all around and I'm going to do this on all of my pages. Um, I'm working on my, my glass craft mat right now. I also, this brown thing right here is my splatter box. <laughs> if you're wondering what that suddenly appeared in the edge there. Um, this is really nice. You can use any cheap makeup brush. You don't have to use anything lovely, you know, nothing new, nothing fancy. Don't need to go order new ones on Amazon. If you've got an old makeup brush, um, or if you've got, if you go to like the dollar store or something and get a makeup brush, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, this is just an old one I happen to have. 
So I am going to look, now look at the difference between that and that. Big difference already, but we're gonna do some more. We're gonna zhuzh it some more. But first I'm going to do the rest of these. So I will fast forward this and be right back. gonna bring the splatter box down into view and um, not all the pages at once only one page at once I am going to I've got some vintage photo Dispress spray stain so this isn't the oxide this is the stain um, and then this is glimmer mist in antique brown now glimmer mist if you're not aware of the differences between these things there's um, Tim Holtz makes the Distress Spray Stain and then the Spray Oxide. And we'll get into a whole video on the differences of those later on in the A to Z series. Um, I'm going to do a whole video about inks, the different types of inks and stuff. But um, this Spray Stain, uh, you don't have to shake because it stays in suspension. The oxides have a little ball in the bottom, so you need to shake them up really good because the pigment in there will um, settle. So this is just a dye, but the, the oxide has dye and oxide. So if you're gonna use an oxide for this, make sure you shake it up really good. And then Glimmer Mist by Tattered Angels has um, a fine glitter in it, a shimmer, and so, uh, let's see if I can catch that on camera at all. See right here where there's some settled stuff? That's the mica. And then a little bit on the bottom maybe? Yeah. So that's mica, which is like the same stuff that you have in your eyeshadows and whatnot. So you've got to shake it up good to get the mica distributed through the spray. Um, yeah. So then I just kind of check around on the edges and make sure that I've got all the mica back in there. And then I am going to plug in my heat gun because we'll try and dry these off quickly. Hold on guys. Okay, I just happen to have it out. Usually I don't. All right, I'm gonna move a few things around over here off camera and then I'm just gonna go ahead with these and let's just see what we can do huh I'm gonna put a little bit of the spray stain on the bottom and I'm not I'm hoping for a little bit of a more splattery look yeah that's kind of what I want and then let's put some of this over the top awesome and then I'm gonna come with my heat gun and dry them up a little. Okay, so now that looks way better than, and it'll go perfectly with our, um, you know, watercolory stuff. So I'm gonna do the other ones. Now you will notice that, um, oh, God, oh. You guys, the struggle's real. I'm trying to fit, I'm trying to fit everything underneath my camera here. Um, I'll take a paper towel like this and go around the bottom of my splatter box to make sure that I don't lay the nice side of this down onto ink and get it splattery. Not that it would matter too much, but also, you guys, this is just a, um, look, it's a crock pot box that I cut the edges down on. And um, you don't have to go buy an expensive splat box or anything like that. This is just literally a crock pot box <laughs> that I was like, that is the perfect size. And it contains all the splatter. I highly, highly recommend doing this. Okay, so here's some vintage photo. And shake your tattered angels. Oh, in between each one. That got all on my hands. 
Um, and the, there we go. I'm gonna dab, dab a little of that excess. And dry it up again. Okay. So that one is dry and it looks nice and pretty. So I'm gonna wipe down the insides here again. And then I forgot guys, when you, especially with this, but with all of your sprays, I have just haven't used mine for a while. Once you've sprayed it, um, when you go to shake it, it'll come through this little bit right here. So I always put something on top like this when I shake it again because look at it, it comes out <laughs> and I forget and I get it all over my hands all the time. Every time I use them, I forget to do that. And then I go to shake up like my oxide sprays. Yeah. So to get it to do the splattery thing and not the fine mist thing, I'm barely pumping it because that kind of shakes it out a little bit more. You can also, um, you know, take the, the thing out like this and do little blotches by just kind of flicking your the end of the sprayer nozzle thing and then this I'm going to spray some of this on there and I'm going to dry it up I'll do the other two and then I'll come back some little colorful splatteries on some of these pages. Oh, come on, work with me. So I brought along three weapons. <laughs> my mini mister, my water brush, and a plain old like watercolor brush. Um, this is an older one that I don't care about. I also have a little glass of water over here on the side. I'm gonna get myself some more paper towel. and situate over here. Okay, so I'm going to um, mini mister on my paints here to get them primed. You don't have to have any sort of fancy watercolors to do this, right? Any watercolors will do. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try with my water brush. So this is just a water pen, a water brush, and it's got water in the tank here, and it delivers the water to the brush up here. It works great for watercolor painting. And I'm gonna try this first. So I'm gonna go, like I'm just gonna try getting super diluted. Let me move this over here. And then I'm gonna try going like this and I think I'll do just one side because I bet it'll soak through a little to the other side um, and I'm gonna do maybe like two or three colors on each page so let's do like a a lighter blue yeah I like how that looks guys and then um, let's do kind of a greenish. What is this over here? Oh, <laughs> some of my paints. I let my little nieces and nephews use them. And sometimes we get a little, a little overzealous with them. And they get a little mixy mixy. That's fine. They're watercolors. They clean off really nice. Okay, now... I'm gonna take my mini mister and I'm gonna go on the paper a little bit to just kind of loosen those up a little. And then I'm gonna dry them and we'll see how this turns out. 
Oh, you know what? I'm going to blot them. This will speed up the drying process quite a bit. And it'll take some of the brightness out too, like the concentration, which is good. It'll mute it down a little. Okay, now let's dry it. Oops. There, oh, and we've got the muted dots on the back. So I hope you can see that. And these aren't all the way dry, but I'm gonna do a bunch of more pages like this. I'm gonna finish drawing this one and then I'll do a bunch more pages like this and I'll be back. Three hours later. Okay, we are back. So I went through and finished up those papers. And then, um, so I splattered around on them and made some painty splattery papers and folded those all up. And then these, I just took, um, kind of there was some paper or some water left in the paper in the wells of the paint. So I just kind of went on the side and splattered around. That turned out kind of cute. I literally just wet down the side and brushed around some color onto it, right on the edges of the paper, like so. And then I splattered some brown over it. So those are kind of fun. And then I folded up these. I did end up putting some color on them too. So I went back, because I felt like they needed some color. So I went back and put some color on there as well. So I've got those. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. So let's start putting these signatures together. <coughs> I did do some preliminary math and I think each signature will get three pages. Um, and then I think there might be one left over. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. And then I'm gonna put in the first third and fifth signatures I'm going to put a piece of doily and of course I haven't counted at all one two three four I don't count the doily five let's see five Nope, let's put one of these in. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. Hold on. One, two, three, four. Okay, and how many pages from the kit did I put in here? One, two, three. Okay, so that one's good. Next. See, that looks cute together right there. Okay, that's one, two. Don't let me lose track, guys. Three. Four. Five. Nope, not in this one. Six, seven, eight. Okay, that one's good. Hmm. One. Doily in this one. Three. Come on. Oh, that's because it's backwards and it will only open one way. <laughs> Three. Um, four. Did I put music in? Nope. 
five, six, seven. Did I put three sheets from the kit? One, two, three. Yep. We'll put the extra sheet in here. Eight. <coughs> Excuse me. I went and ate some lunch and now my throat feels all junky. One, two, three, four, So let's make sure I got my three pages from the kid in there. I did. And did I get a, yep, okay. And last but not least, this guy. Let's put a cute page next to that one. One, so two. three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll put this last one in the middle. Eight. Okay, so now we've got our signatures done. For this one, we don't need to cut anything down on the side. Um, so we've got our signatures put together for both books. Pretty exciting. So crunchy on that one, super pastel and bright and cheerful on this one. It's two completely different books. <laughs> I also wanted to show you, I kept my cloth, my paper towels, my dab off, you know, towels. Um, and then I had some extra paint, so I just kind of brushed it back and forth when it was wet and dried it up with my um, heat tool. And I thought this would look really cute if we ripped it up or put it in clusters or especially in this books, in these books, right? Because look at how cute that looks with that. Um, it would be great as like ruffles on the edges of paper or something. So we'll definitely use that. That goes in the this pile. So what I'm gonna do is, we've got our signatures curated, <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is um, end this video here, and then my I'll cut out all the ephemera and everything, and I will get that ready to go like process through the ephemera, um, and we'll do that in our next video. And I think, I thought about it a little bit, I think what I'll do is work on one book through, and then we'll, get to the next one and work through it unless there are elements that are going to be fairly similar like some of the you know ephemera pieces are similar so if we work on making a bunch of them into something we'll do the same for the other book so we'll kind of run them concurrent anyway if you're interested in playing along with these books specifically uh the kits like i said the kits are in my shop and um, I will do my best to tell you as we go, like where I got my papers from, but some of them, you know, some of them won't be available anymore. Like those ones that I was using as half pages. I don't think that tablet's available anymore, but I'm not entirely sure on that. So anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. <clears throat> I am excited for this next uh, start to finish journal series. Um, I'm looking forward to crafting these two very different but very similar journals together with you guys. And uh, thanks for hanging out. And I will see you um, again very soon. Have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night, whatever time it is, on whatever side of this fantastic globe of ours that you live on. And uh, until I see you next time, stay safe. Stay healthy, 
be happy. I hope that you are cheerful. I hope that you're having a good time and being able to be creative. And uh, until I see you guys next time, stay safe, take care, and God bless you. Bye-bye.